I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles tonight, if you would please, and go to Romans chapter 8. And we're going to be looking at verses 26 through 28 and then a number of verses uh, throughout the Bible study this evening. So I'll give you time to get your Bible and to get it out and get ready to go, if you would please. But tonight I'm going to be bringing a, a study on our, our partner in prayer. Our partner in prayer. And so uh, pray for me as I bring this study tonight. You say, preacher, do you feel funny speaking in an auditorium with nobody there? No, uh, I'm not speaking to nobody here. I'm speaking to all of you that are out there. And so for me, that is just as real. And I am so thankful that we get to do this. And so let's keep that in mind. And, uh, and I really mean that. You are my uh, audience tonight. You are my church family tonight. You are our online friends this evening. And so I'm very thankful that we get to be here and get to be here for you. So right now, let's have us an opening word of prayer. And as I pray out loud, would you pray in your hearts? And let's ask the Lord the same thing, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege of being able to stand now in this pulpit on this Wednesday night and still speak to our church family and our friends. And Lord, I thank you so very, very much for the opportunity. I pray you'd give us understanding that we may keep your word as the psalmist said. So thank you so very, very much. Thank you for the safety that you've given already. We would ask you, Lord, to be with these three requests that I uh, shared this evening. And if you'll do that, that'll be a great blessing. So Father, help us now, I pray in Jesus' name, as we look at this very important thing called our partner in prayer. And I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Romans chapter eight, we're gonna look at verses 26 through 28. And so uh, let me read these and you follow along. And I think you're well aware of these verses and what they say. It says here in verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also uh, helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is uh, the uh, mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And verse 28 is what everybody knows, even if they don't know the address. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. And so tonight we look at our partner in prayer. You know, I'm gonna make a statement here and I want you to sort of hear me out on it if you would. There are, there are times that many a prayer warrior suffers from what I am now calling uh, prayer ADHD. What do I mean by that? That's attention deficit uh, hyperactivity disorder. Now, what is that for prayer? Well, that is where the mind wanders even during the most intense times of prayer. You've done it. You'll start praying. Maybe you're praying for Timberline and all of a sudden your mind wanders to another subject or another person or another situation. And then you have to bring yourself back to praying for what you were originally praying for. Now, I know I personally suffer from this, but I know I'm also not the only one who suffers from prayer ADHD. Uh, there are some of the best prayer warriors that I'm speaking to right now who you suffer from the very same thing and you know that you do. Your mind wanders and you wonder if you're okay and if everything's all right and if God is upset with you because your mind is wandering and all the rest of it and you think maybe I should have written down a prayer list or maybe I should have done this. So is there anything wrong with you? Well, praise the Lord, there's hope. I wanna say this is that there's nothing really wrong with you. The truth of the matter is this is something that I think most of us, and I'm using the word most loosely because I don't know most Christians, but I do know a lot. And I do believe that this is one of those things that many of even the best Christians suffer, for, suffer from. So in this Bible study, we're gonna see a few simple facts uh, about our 
partner in prayer. And hopefully it ought to help all of us to feel somewhat better about those times when we either go to the Lord while we're laying in bed or go to the Lord while we are standing or go to the Lord while we are uh, on our knees or uh, uh, prostrate before the Lord or whatever it might be. And, um, and I think that what we're going to give you tonight is going to help you to feel better about that. Not that you ought to be doing it all the time, but listen, I find myself suffering from this every, should I even confess this to you, every single day. And uh, listen, I try really hard not to let my mind wander, just like you do. So let me help you here if I can. First of all, I want you to notice these truths and these facts, if you would please. Uh, the Bible says here, first of all, the Holy Spirit intercedes with us, okay? He intercedes with us, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The word intercession here, it's very, very important that we know what it means and what it means in this particular verse. When God puts a word in the Bible, he puts it there on purpose and he puts it there with purpose. And so therefore every word of God is pure and man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord, as it says, in, even in the Old Testament. So intercession in verse 26 simply means this, that the Holy Spirit goes with us to the Father on our behalf. He's our prayer partner. He goes with us to the Heavenly Father on our behalf. So the Bible says here, he make it, the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. And so we're going to the Lord and he's going to the Lord as well. Uh, he helps us to plead uh, to our Father for our needs and even for our wants in intercession. Now, uh, he helps us to plead. Now, why does he do this? Well, let me give you a number of things that I have written down here. First of all, God tells us we do not know what we need. We read that in verse 26. We don't know. And that's the truth of the matter. That's why I'll mention something later on, but that's why we often pray amiss and ask amiss. We do not know what we need. Secondly, the Holy Spirit does know what we need. Why? Because he's, om, he's omnipotent and he is omniscient. He, is, he knows it all. He knows our needs. The Bible says, even before we ask, and then next I go to him to find out what my needs are. If I don't know my needs, I have to find out what my needs are. So I go uh, to find out my needs, and then he tells me what my needs are. Uh, listen, so often we go to the Lord and we... Uh, uh, we think we know what we need. So we give God this big long list and we have these different things that we want and different things that we need and things that we think that we need, but we really don't know what our needs are. Sometimes as the spirit has revealed them to us, we know, but often we go to the Lord in prayer and we don't know what our needs are. So what it is, is he tells me what my needs are. And then I make a list of the things which he reminds me of the things that I need. And then I go to the Father, and here's the interesting thing. The Bible says, as we said, he maketh intercession for us, and so he goes with me and tells uh, the Father my needs. Isn't that interesting? You see, I don't know what I need, but he knows what I need. And uh, listen, the people say, oh, I asked God for this, and, and he didn't answer my prayer. Well, maybe it was something that you did not need. I hear people say, God never says no to prayer. <laughs> Sometimes he does. And the reason he does is because we don't know what we need, and we ask wrongly. And so there is a condition, and I want you to notice this. Take your Bibles right now and go back to Psalm 37 and verse 4. Psalm 37 and verse 4, I believe, is misunderstood by many, if not by most, and is preached incorrectly by most of us preachers. I know I've done it in the past. I don't do it anymore because Psalm 37, 4 means this. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So what does that mean? That means he gives me what to desire. You see, I delight myself in him, and when I do that, I know what he desires, and he puts those desires in my heart. 
Can't go wrong with that, can you? He tells me what to desire. It doesn't mean that he gives me everything in the world that I want. It doesn't mean that at all, as some people have taught. Name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. You know, the whole nine yards. I, it's, if, if it makes me happy, then of course it makes God happy. Well, of course not. That's not true. There are things that make all of us happy that displease the Lord terribly. So we must ask him and have him put the desires within us in our hearts, and we can take those things to the Lord. What's the condition? Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And that's important. So number one, I said, the Holy Spirit intercedes with us. Number two, we both have access to the Father. What a great concept. We both have access to the Father. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 18. I'll give you a moment to get there. Ephesians 2 and verse 18. I'm so glad we get to do this tonight, even though my church family is not present with me here in this building. It's so, such a blessing to have our friends uh, and our church family as well join us together online. So here I am in freezing cold Manitou Springs, by the way, in a nice warm building. It's been warm in here all day long, but Manitou Springs is frozen solid right now at two below zero and wind chill is even worse. They said this morning, I was looking at the news a while ago before I got all this set up and they said Colorado Springs had wind chill of 32 below zero. Wow, that's incredible. Well, the wind chill is going to get bad tonight. But I'm thinking all these folks who are friends and family and church family that get to be on together tonight, what a blessing. Okay, you've probably had plenty of time to get to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 18. And the point is this, is we both have access to the Father. It says, for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We pray to the Father through the Son with the Spirit. And so he's our prayer partner. See, we don't go to the Lord all by ourselves, all by our lonesome. Uh, our prayer partner when we go to the Father is the Holy Spirit. Let me read you another verse, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19. Matthew 18 and verse 19, it says, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything uh, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Now, this is interesting here. You see, we pray to the Father through the Son uh, with the Spirit. We both have access to the Father. The word agree that is found here in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19 is the same word which, from which we get the word symphony or harmony. We're talking here about being in harmony or being in symphony with the Lord. And so that's why, yeah, uh, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires. That means I'm on the same wavelength. That means I am on the, uh, I'm in the same harmonious range that he is in. We are making harmony together. And when we are in harmony with the Holy Spirit, he can present our petition to the Father. We're in total agreement. We're in symphony. We are in harmony. Now, uh, I am one. Uh, I, I don't read music, and you know that. I've said that to you how many times, but I know music. And I can often tell when there is a disharmony or a miscommunication from one instrument or one voice to another. And, and I know that. And I've been, I, even to this day, maybe uh, you, you probably never heard this, but I still study music yet today. You say, well, why don't you learn how to read music? Oh, I don't need to learn another language. I just need to listen to music for me right now. And at 66 years of age, I don't know if I want to learn how to read music. Uh, EGBDF, uh, all the other things that are there. Every good boy deserves favor. Uh, uh, good boys do fine always. I know all that stuff, but I don't know where it's at on a piano. I don't even really know where it is on a guitar. And so when I think about this, I, I listen and I can hear a disunity of voice or a disharmony of instrument. And it happens all too often. And uh, I remember a number of years ago, uh, we had a, 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 uh, two folks who were practicing a particular song. I think it was three that were actually practicing the song. And I'm listening because they would always ask me, 
uh, to listen in on the music and make any critique or that I needed to make or any corrections and all that. We got to one point, and I looked over at Penny, and I said, that's not right. And it wasn't that she was playing it wrong. She was playing it exactly like the music had it written. And she told me so. She said, well, that's how it's written. And I said, I really don't care how it's written. It's not right. And so we corrected it right there on the spot. And often in a, in a song with a voice or with an instrument, something will be out of tune. I have often asked when I play my guitar here on, uh, on particular services, I will ask a couple of folks, I said, was the guitar in tune tonight? Did it sound like it was in tune to you? Someone might say to me, I'm the wrong person to ask. Another person might say, well, it sounded good to me. It sounded in tune to me. And uh, because one, sometimes when I'm standing behind the guitar and I'm playing it, uh, sometimes I'll miss it, but I try to be good at it. But the Bible here, when it says agree, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree, shall be in, sim in symphony, shall be in harmony. And so there is a fellowship between the Holy Spirit and the apostles. We can read that here. You see, there has to be a harmony. You can't you can't be in harmony if you're always fighting with God or with the Spirit's conviction in your heart. Acts chapter 15 and verse 28, listen to this, probably an overlooked thing by many. It says in Acts 15, 28, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. That's harmony. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us, that's the apostles, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. So there has to be a harmony when I go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, I think that if we, the verse that we often use and sometimes overuse, but it's still in the Bible, is Amos 3 and verse 3. Can two walk together except what? You need to finish the verse for me. Except they be agreed. And so there has to be a harmony. And so that fellowship has to be there. See, the Spirit of God talks to the Father as I talk to the Father, backing up my request. Why? Because we're in harmony. I'm saying the same thing. And so, and, and how important that is. Uh, I have said this before, um, how important it is. And I learned it from my pastor. And it was a good lesson to learn. But there is not a time that I don't walk out of that door back here onto this platform that I have not asked God to speak through me and help me to say only what he would say if he were standing here. Now, why do I do that? I do that because when I speak to your ears, I want him to speak to your heart. I can't speak to your heart. I can only speak to your ears. That's it. I am, I am physical. I am human. You are physical. You are human. I have a spirit. You have a spirit, but I cannot speak to your spirit. The spirit of God has to do that. And I always ask God to do that. One illustration that I've given far too many times, but it just fits, was after our, when we were located up in Woodland Park years ago, uh, after a sermon I preached on Sunday morning, uh, one of our men came up to me afterwards and he looked at me and he said, Preacher, thank you for saving my marriage today. I was dumbfounded and I said, you're welcome. I went back to my office and I pulled out that outline, which I still have to this day. I pulled out that outline and reread it word for word in my office there was nothing in that sermon about marriage, nothing, not one thing. But the Spirit of God spoke to him through a passage of Scripture, and it helped save his marriage. Amazing. He's now in heaven, and so we don't have to worry about him anymore. But that was very interesting. That was 30, 30 years ago that that happened. And so uh, let's, say, let's say this. I say to the Father, I say, I need a new coat. And the Holy Spirit says, yes, Father, he needs a new coat. Now, I don't need a new coat. I'm using that as an illustration. But somebody might go and say, now, Lord, I need a, I need a brand new 2022 Cadillac. That's what I need. That's what I have. What a testimony, Lord, if I drove a car like that and showed your provision. Spirit of God can say in my heart, you don't need a Cadillac. And he can say to the father, no, he doesn't need a Cadillac. Don't give him one. But if I say I need transportation, the Lord can provide that because that is a definite need. 
Now that transportation might be a Cadillac, or it might be a Chevy Two uh, from 1962, or it might be uh, it might be a Buick, or it might be an Oldsmobile, or it might be a Chevrolet, or it might be a Subaru, or it might be a Kia, or whatever it might be. But the Lord can show that to me. You see, He reminds the Father that we have talked together before coming to present our petitions, and I've gone to the Lord and I've said, Lord, now this would be good. This would be something that I need. And the Lord has answered that prayer in that particular way. Now, how do you do that? Well, by walking in the Spirit. By walking in the Spirit. And what happens is, is God's desires then become the things that we want, you see. Let me read you three verses, if I may. Number one was uh, Psalm 37 and verse 40, where the Bible says, And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. What a blessing. It didn't say that they prayed a particular prayer. It says they trusted in the Lord. And this just reminds me, and this is not one of the verses that I have written down, but it just reminds me of Job. When Job went through his trial on this earth, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. He wasn't saying he was trusting God to do a particular thing. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And there are those today who are always trusting God to do something rather than trusting him, you see, with whatever answer he gives and how important that is. John 15, 7. It says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So there we have the word of God abiding in us, you see, which goes right back uh, to uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And then I can go right back if I can, please, to Psalm 37 and verse 4. Because it fits so perfectly here, it simply says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know, my desires don't always match God's, but if I'm walking in the spirit like I ought to, if I'm delighting myself in him as I ought to, if I'm trusting in him as I ought to, he can put those desires in me and then we're in harmony when I go to the Lord for answered prayer. Oh, but I asked God for this and he never answered. Oh, maybe it was what you didn't need. So, now, let's go to point number three, which is the last point in the Bible study tonight. And uh, don't look at your watches. You'll have a heart attack <laughs> when you realize how short this is. But I said, number one, uh, the Holy Spirit intercedes with us. We learned that from Romans 8, 26. It says, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. Okay. And then number two, I said, we both have access to the father, Ephesians two and verse 18, where it says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree as touching anything on, uh, uh, touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done unto them by my father, which is in heaven, learning about agreement, being in harmony with the Lord. So many believers today are so far from harmony with the Lord. They have no harmony with him, always fighting God, fist fighting him. It's like, it's like uh, somebody who gets a brand new puppy and they're trying to teach the dog how to walk on a leash and the dog takes them for a walk. Well, sometimes we, we may be on the leash, but we're trying to take God for a walk when we really need to let him be in control. And then thirdly, he intercedes for things that we do not ask. He intercedes for things that we do not ask. Uh, Romans 8, 27, it says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He searched the hearts. God knows what's in my heart. And I don't always know what to ask, you see. Uh, how important is this? Intercession in this particular place simply means that the Holy Spirit uh, is coming before God for us on our behalf. Things that I don't even know that I need, he can go to the Lord and ask for those things. And that's wonderful that the Lord can do something like that. I am just thrilled to death that God knows my needs before I even ask. He tells God about the needs for which I forgot to ask. Have you ever gone to the Lord and then later on said, oh yeah, Lord, by the way, I forgot to bring this up. Well, the Spirit's already done it, you see.
And uh, even things that I don't know that I need, uh, he can talk to the Father and he can provide those things for me that I need. He intercedes for me as he previously interceded with me because he knows every need that I have. What does he know? I've written down a few things. By the way, the Lord knows my good days and my bad days. And he knows yours too. And he knows your victories and he knows your defeats. That's exactly right. Uh, very interesting here. And he knows my burdens and he knows my tears and he knows my smiles. He knows everything about the, me. There is nothing in my life that is hidden from him. Even though I may not know what I need, they may be hidden from me. If you're like me, your mind wanders. And if you're like me, sometimes you forget or maybe sometimes you forget a lot. This is where the spirit <clears throat> helpeth our infirmities, you see. And he prays for those things which we need. Oh, thank God that he does. And he knows exactly what I need, which, by the way, goes back to Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, them that are called according to his purpose. Verses 26 through 28, explaining how the Holy Spirit prays for us and prays with us in harmony so that you and I uh, can get our prayers answered. Very interesting. Now, when you do not know what for what you ought to pray, ask him for what you ought to pray about. You say, that seems awkward. Have you ever done it? So you don't say, Lord, help me to know what I should pray for. And I guarantee you, he will bring into your heart and into your mind, and he will remind you of the things that you need to pray about, you see. God's good about that. And then we get into harmony for those things and we're praying. And listen, we know there are some things that people pray for that are so far out of the will of God and out of the word of God and, and uh, things that they don't need and things that they shouldn't have and all the rest. And then they get all mad at God because they don't get their prayers answered. Well, shame on us when we do that. We need to be in harmony with him is what we need to be. Now, which brings me to the conclusion of tonight's Bible study, many prayers remain unanswered for this reason. It is because we ask amiss. You see, often our prayers are heavily tainted with selfish desires and out of control emotions. People get out of control in their emotions. Somebody's offended them and they get, uh, get their feelings hurt and uh, they go without this and somebody else has that. And Lord, you know how that person lives and, and you're blessing them and you know how I live and I'm, and I'm not being blessed. Oh, we have all these little silly excuses that we use. Our emotions are out of control. Sometimes because we are physically sick, not well, we don't know how we ought to think or act. Well, Here's what we, the Bible says this, James called it asking amiss in James chapter four and verse three. He says, ye ask and receive not. Now that's interesting because there are those that say, God always answer your prayers. Just a minute. It said, ye ask and receive not. Sounds like a no to me. And it says, because ye ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. So we don't get what we ask for because we're asking amiss, you see. And we need to pray as Jesus did when he simply said these words. He says, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, but thine be done. Oh, how important it is. How important it is that we pray within the will of God. But we got to pray in wanting the things that he wants, not just the things that we want. And we should learn to go to God with a blank sheet of paper instead of a huge long list. Now, I'm not against having a list and a prayer list. I'm really not. In fact, every day I have a list of things that I pray through and pray for every single day. But I'm not just stuck to that list. I go to God often with a blank sheet of paper and I ask him to fill it in. The illustration that I've given here is when I was 17 years of age and I surrendered my life to serve the Lord I remember one of my buddies, he, he wrote to me in my yearbook. He said, he says, I know you'll, you'll, you'll be a success with God as your itinerary planner. Well, I wanted God to plan my itinerary. And uh, I remember, uh, as I tell the story, I, when Tom Wallace was preaching, my church family knows the story probably better than I do. And I came down and knelt at the altar. And I said, Lord, you're not getting much, but you're getting all of me. And I spiritually wrote God a blank check and asked him to fill it in. And I signed it. 
whatever God wanted in my life. I didn't hand him something that I wanted to do. I handed him a blank check and said, you fill it out for me. That's all that's important to me. Well, the Lord has kept me in his work now for what, oh goodness. Uh, ever since I was a teenager, since those days, and still in it, thanking the Lord for that. And what I'm saying is this, is instead of giving God a never-ending list, lists are not wrong, but blank sheets of paper are just as necessary, if not more so. So the Holy Spirit is our partner in prayer and how important it is. He's our partner in prayer. But we need to make sure that we are praying in harmony and letting the Lord fill in the blanks. And that's my Bible study for tonight. Let's bow our heads for a closing word of prayer, but don't go away, okay? Our Heavenly Father, I love you.